Hey, it's Luke. We're going to look at five interesting things you can do with Ableton Live. And I actually have a bonus sixth one if you don't have an MPE controller and you want to be able to do MPE type sounds. So let's get started. The first one seems so simple, but I see so many people struggling with this where they'll be building a chord. And then they're going to select all and stretch them all the way to the end. Or they might have another chord going here. So they're stretching either these here to the top here and then doing these or whatever. But there's an easier way. You can just select all, which is Command A or Control A, depending on if you're on Windows or Mac, and just hit this little button here. It does it right away and it'll do it no matter where. If you've got shorter notes here, it doesn't matter how long the notes are. It'll stretch to the next place with our notes and it'll stretch the last notes that you have to the end of your clip. So it's just a really easy way to lengthen those notes. Number two has to do with automation. If you have something like this where you're going from a higher number to a lower number, if you want to make it a little smoother, you move this, it's, it's not going to be smooth. You can do a whole bunch of these and make it relatively smooth, but it'll still be choppy. But all you have to do is hit Alt or Option. You have to do this before you press it, but see how it does this curve, which is just amazing. So you can have that gradual slide into whatever you're trying to do. It's just so nice to be able to do this. And if you want it to be more precise, you can hit Shift at the same time. And as you go, you'll get this very, very slow movement so you can get it exactly the way you want. And that works with knobs and stuff as well on Ableton Live. If you're moving this and you wanted to get it to a specific number, uh, just press down shift while you're doing it and it'll let you have it way more precise where you can get each number individually instead of sometimes jumping a few at a time. Number three is if you use Melodyne or another tuner like that in Ableton Live. One thing you noticed is it's a whole lot of work. You have to hit transfer and then you play your clip and then you do it. It, it just takes a bit of time back and forth. Ableton, please add ARE support. But this way makes it a lot easier. If you go to your settings and you go down to the section here where it says file folder, there's an option here for sample editor. Mine's set to Melodyne already, but you can hit browse and then go into your applications, choose that. And then when you close this up, you'll be able to record something. So let's just do a little bit of an off key recording. Uh, and then just click on your clip. And at the bottom here, you've got an edit button and you'll notice it loaded up Melodyne. It brought it in directly. You didn't have to do transfer anything. So you can do your tuning, whatever you need to do. Uh, uh, and and it gets cut off here, but these are the Melodyne settings at the top. And you go to File, and right here you can hit Replace Audio. And once you've done this, you can go back to your track. Uh, and that's the pitched version of it. And then you can save the Melodyne file, and you can reopen it after if you need to make some changes and replace the audio anytime you need to. Number four, you might know about this one already, but a lot of people don't. And it's just so useful and quick. I see so many people when they want to move up an octave, they'll be going from this one here. So they're going to A and then they're finding the next A and moving it there, whatever. You can just select whichever note you want. You hit shift and then your arrow up and down and it'll move it up or down an octave right away. And you can do this with multiple notes if you want to do this with all of them. And you can even do one specific note that comes back over your track. So if we choose this piano key here, it'll select this long note and then the next one further down. And then we can do the same thing, move this up and down uh, just by hitting shift. So it's really, really useful to do and uh, it makes things so much quicker if you're not doing this already. Number five is useful, especially if you feel that your beats are really boring. So you might be using the groove pool and then going down and choosing something like uh, swing, MPC, double down, 16s. But if you want some new interesting grooves, you can actually make your own out of pretty well anything. So if you were to take a drum loop like this, it's really, really easy. You just go into the clip on the bottom here and click right. And you just find extract grooves here and it'll take a few seconds. And then all of a sudden you have it here on the left. So you can go to another track. You can take your new groove that you created here, drop it right here, 
And then you can do your adjustments here on the randomizing, the velocity and your timing, whatever. It'll have a different feel than maybe what you're, you're used to if you're tired of the ones that are in there already. All right, earlier I mentioned that there's a way to basically fake MPE input, and this is how you do it. You'll just click on your MIDI clip here, and on these here, the third one here that says note expression, if you have it a little bit higher up, it might be way at the bottom here, note expression. If you click on a note here, you can basically take this and move it. You're moving up the semitones, and you can do this on each of the notes. and have the chords blend into one another. Or you can go the other way and bring them way down. And you can go to the pencil up here and then come down and draw your pressure just as if you were playing with the keyboard and moving moving your fingers around and uh, the same thing with the slide you can do whatever you need to and for some reason this moved over here so I'll do this and then you'll have you can do all of your adjustments it'll take a whole lot longer than doing it with an MPE controller but it's definitely useful to get some variations in your sounds so that's what we have I hope some of these can be useful to make your music better and uh, yeah thanks for watching I'll see you in the next video